God dang it, Joey! Okay, fine. If you don't want to help, that's fine. Oh, sorry, everyone. Hi. Welcome to another episode of The Guido Goes Off. As always, thank you for watching. Well, I'm sure everybody knows the news that broke out yesterday, and I was hoping not to cover anything of a in reference to the current political tempest going on here in the U.S., but Joey Styles decided to do something very, very stupid. Um, if anyone watched the IPP broadcast of Evolve 72, uh, they saw the in-ring segment featuring Joey Styles, Joanna Rose, and Stokely Hathaway. Now, even after being warned by Evolve President Gabe Sapolsky not to t make any political references, um, Joey Styles uh, complimented Joanna Rose on um, how she looked uh, last night. And then, and then decided to say that if our new president was here, he'd probably try to grab you by the... Now, he did stop before he went on. Well, clearly, neither here nor there. But this did cause a very... Uh, this did cause a lot of anger to viewers of Evolve. And uh, Gabe Sapolsky on Twitter profusely apologized. And then... Um, took to Twitter again to inform everyone that Evolve has parted ways with Joey Styles. Now, this isn't the first time Styles has been fired, even, even this year. Um, he was fired earlier by uh, WWE um, from his position as head of uh, WWE's online content, uh, as online uh, division, uh, for, com for comments he made in reference to Roman Reigns, uh, during an online inter during a Facebook I was gonna say Facebook live interview I think um, basically how he mentioned that uh, Roman reigns the only reason Roman reigns was popular is because moms and kids like him so that got him fired and now here he is fired for doing the exact opposite of what he was told to do I mean it, it's very simple you could literally say anything else literally Anything else. You can make any dirty references you wanted. Yet you had to go into this political firestorm, at which, you know, is, let's face it, it's tearing, it's tearing the U.S. apart right now. The one thing you weren't supposed to do, and you did it. I understand you're trying to make a joke. I understand you're trying to be funny. Believe me, I know about jokes that backfire. I have quite a bit. For every one joke I make that works, there, I got um, like a hundred that don't. So I understand if you're trying to make a joke, but still, given the situation here in the U.S. and not and the fact that you were warned not to, I mean, it's uh, we're trying to you know one. We're trying to get this nation back together. I mean, the, you're talking about the most, you know, the most anger-fueled, the most disruptive, and the most, you know, an election that has torn this country into right down party lines. And we're trying to get this country to heal and above all, and and that's the thing with our entertainment. What our entertainment needs to do is take us away from these troubles. I understand celebrities have their opinions, and there's some, and there's some that have been very vocal about their um, favor or anger toward who became the new president. There just comes a time, and I think this time is one of them. Where, as entertainers, no matter how big or how small, our job is to help people um, get away from their problems. No matter, you know, get away from their troubles. No matter, you know, like I said, no matter your reach, whether you're a big time Hollywood star that makes movies that make millions and millions of dollars, or you have uh, a tiny little YouTube channel. 
that um, is nowhere near a million uh, viewers. But still, I feel that that's our job. That, yes, we have our opinions, but we should be held to the standard where our job is to take people away from their problems, to, away from their troubles, to get them to just sit back and relax and unwind for a little bit. I keep saying all the time, no matter how much I try to analyze this and all this, and all this stuff about wrestling, wrestling is entertainment. Wrestling is supposed to be fun. Sports are supposed to be fun. TV, movies, uh, comic books, comic books, um, regular literature. It's supposed to be entertaining. It's supposed to take people away from their troubles, not to add to them. And I understand why Gabe Sapol I understand why Gabe Sapolsky warned everybody. He's like, hey. We're in the middle of one of the biggest shit storms in the United in history of the United States. We have a country divided. We have a country divided. We have riots. We have people harassing other people because of their political views. It's, it come, it's come down to a point where it, it just seems like, for some ungodly reason, everybody in this country has lost their common freaking sense. And have lost all respect whatsoever. Uh, for their fellow American. This nation needs to grow up. That's a fact. This nation needs to just come to grips. What's done is done. Whether you like Donald Trump, whether you hate him, he was voted in as president. You can use the hashtag not my president all you want. You can you can assemble peaceably in the streets protesting it. You have your right. What you do not have the right to do is destroy your community. Is to ver verbally and physically attack your fellow American. You don't have the right to judge, pe to judge people and harass people based on their race, on their religion, on their orientation. You don't have the right to hurt people, to hurt their animals, to hurt their communities. We all live here. We are all Americans. We may be Republican, we may be Democrat, we may even be third party, green, reform. Um, heck, we have communists here. But we're all Americans and we need to get back. To making this country a better place. I've always been taught and I've always believed America sets the tone for the world. That we, the, that we now we've gone from this beacon of hope from give us your poor, your tired, your huddled masses yearning to be free to I hate everybody that isn't like me. I know I'm getting away from the subject matter here, but honestly. We need to get back to back to business, back to America. We need to move on from this. And I know it's easy for it's easy to easily said and hard to accomplish. But we need to move on from this. We need to get back to our lives. We need to get back to what what makes us us and above all else. We just need to get back our common freaking sense and our respect for our fellow human being. Because Losing your shit over an election, it doesn't help anyone. So let's get back to work.
And damn it, Joey, why'd you do this? I mean, seriously, there's a lot of people that respect Joey Styles, but to do something like this, especially with, you know, you were told not to do this! Anything but! And you did it, and you're fired, and good lord, I'm gonna move on. So the happy news, happy, happy, happy news, happy, happy, happy news. Okay, um, for those of you who don't know, earlier this week, uh, Ring of Honor uh, announced that they made two major signings of uh, British talent. Uh, they have signed Will Osprey and uh, Marty Sc uh, Skrull. Skrull? I, I keep trying to get that right. I have to get that right because I I, I want I don't want to screw up names. Trust me, it took me. Trust me. Okay, a little side note. It probably took me about a month to properly pronounce Joanna the Inertia Check. UFC Women's Strawweight Champion. I just want to... Anyway, okay. Uh, these are two... This is this is a pretty big announcement. Now, um, in the case of... Now, I'm going to kind of go down this. Uh, in the case of Will Osprey, it's not really as much of a surprise that ROH signed him. Uh, Osprey has made quite a name for himself worldwide, but especially at, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, where uh, He is a member of the Chaos Faction. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that is the faction in New Japan uh, headed up by Kazuchika Okada. It was headed by Shinsuke Nakamura, who has kind of recently you know, left to go be awesome in NXT. Never mind. Um, now he's... Um, his style is really fun to watch. Uh, it's caused controversy <laughs> with the old guard, if you will. Um, I know. Uh, I know after his. I know his uh, match with Ricochet. Um, I think at Dominion. Um, you know, for for the uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. I know that ruffled some feathers, uh, especially with the likes of uh, Vader and Jim Cornette. But then again. Jim Cornette's kind of getting his feathers ruffled by anything. I think like a, a small breeze pissed him off a couple weeks ago. Um, and he also did win this year uh, the uh, 2016 uh, Battle of the Super Juniors. So, um, like I said, with his relationship with New Japan, not really a huge jump that Will Osprey would be signed. Um, a lot of people were hoping he was going to be in the Cruiserweight Classic. It could happen. Um, but yeah, uh, so, uh, to Marty Skrull, the villain, um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about him, but I have been doing some research, I have watched some matches, I actually watched, um, uh, for everybody that's, that likes What Culture Pro Wrestling, I did see, actually see the match between the two, and I, I really, I really like Skrull, um, I mean, he's, he's got, he's a solid wrestler, can work with any style, but also the threading in of the basic heel tactics. I mean, he calls himself the villain for a reason, and and it shows, and and it's kind of funny. Uh, so you know he's made quite a name for himself in the UK, quite a reputation worldwide. So ROH signing him, that's this is a big thing. So congratulations to those two young men. Uh, we're looking. I'm looking forward to seeing them on on my TV on ROH. But if you haven't seen them. Go to YouTube, do yourself a favor, watch these guys' matches. Um, you know, also if you have New Japan Gold, you know, watch that match with Ricochet. That, as far as like modern wrestling, the more high flying style used, that match is a work of art. It's a master class, as I like to say. For the, uh, you know, you got. You get a classic, then, then you, I, I have this little level above called Masterclass, and it's great to watch. So do yourself a favor, go go find, uh, watch these guys. Um, you won't regret it. Well, it looks like the battle between TNA and Billy Corgan has come to a close. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Corgan tweeted out earlier this week that he has settled his um, that the debt between himself and TNA has been settled. Um, as many of you know, he was threatening to go to court 
because he was owed, um, a, he said, $1.8 million. Uh, the money that he paid into TNA um, for it to, to continue business. Um, as it was announced earlier this month, um, Anthem, Anthem uh, Sports, the company behind the Fight Network, has um, has a uh, become a uh, a uh, source of credit for TNA, and part of that agreement was paying off Corgan. Uh, he he has there's no details up. He um, according to his Twitter, Corgan said he's probably going to do some interviews, and um, in those he's going to put out the details of this settlement, but. Um, the big monkey seems to be off TNA's back, and they can move forward uh, in their, this partnership with Anthem. And again, like I said, if as details come out, um, like I've been keeping up on this as much as possible. I'm sure you guys have as well. And there's more details that come out. We'll let you know. That's going to do it for this episode of the Guido Goes Off. Um, as always, I thank you guys for watching. Um, I appreciate the support more than you can possibly ever know. If you have anything to say about the uh, um, bits that I talked about, feel free to drop a line in the comment section below. Of course, you can always talk to me via my uh, social media, my Twitter, my Instagram uh, address down there. Um, big shout out to Ambrose Dreamer on her birthday. I hope you had a good one. Um, I know it's your birthday's over uh, in Australia, but um, I hope you had a good one. I hope you enjoyed yourself. So, um, with that being said, I'm the Guido, and I think we're done here.